In this video, I'm going to be replacing the front and rear shocks on this 2023 GMC Sierra Denali. A little backstory on why I want to replace the shocks on this truck. It's my father's. Uh, he went from a 21 AT4 and upgraded to a 23 Denali, took it off the lot. First thing he did was call me and said, man, this thing does not drive as smooth as my AT4. And I was like, that's crazy. It's a Denali. You're just, you're just thinking that. It's brand new. Drive it. Well, it's been a couple months. And he, he decided to let's let's go with some new shocks. We do know the AT4 was equipped with some ranchos and there's it's more of an off-road package. So uh, we're hoping that putting some uh, off-road shocks, we went with Fox Performance and we just found them online, the direct fit, because there's no lift kit. This 23 Denali is equipped with an electronic electronically dampening system for each shock. Um, there is a, a, level, a height sensor and a dampener on every wheel uh, for this truck. So it's not as simple as just pulling the old shocks out and putting the new shocks in. Uh, that's where Shock Delete Engineering comes in. Awesome company. They make several different kits for the GMC, Sierra, uh, a couple other manufacturers and models. So we went with them, ordered their kit up. Let's jump right into this repair or upgrade. Um, I'm going to start with the fronts. We will have to compress the struts, so they're good. Hopefully, they're probably a little bit harder than the rears. Um, let's go over the tools that I'm going to need and use. All right, we're going to start with one wheel or one strut at a time. Um, you're going to want to make sure you're on a level surface, a good jack, and a couple pair of jack stands so you're safe by jacking up this front suspension. Um, you will need access through the top above hood to get the top strut bolts and then we'll take the wheel off and pull the strut out. Here is the strut compressor tool that I got. I did a little research and um, this one I got right off Amazon, Billet, Billy Tools. Um, it's a really cool system. It has a nice support bracket on it so once it is all built you can see that it'll, uh, it'll stay supported with that little ring guard so it won't can't come apart or fly off on you. Uh, compressing the springs can be a little scary, so we're going to be really careful and follow the instructions and, and just try to be as safe as possible. All right, here is everything that comes in the Shock Delete kit. Um, you have four level sensors and then four mounts for the solenoids that are on the factory shocks. Uh, they come with a full booklet of instructions and basically everything you need to mount the new location for the solenoids and then trick the ride height sensors um, into w the level that they're at. Um, let's keep going. Alright, here is my Fox Performance Series 2.0 um, direct replacement. This is the front strut shock. Comes with a new mount. And then here's my rear. All right, let's get this front wheel off and keep going. So yeah, you want to make sure you got a couple jack stands, your wheels are chucked, and you're on a decent level surface. Let's get this wheel off. thefts, these new GM wheel locks, 
There we go. Now we got a better view. So you can see you have your height sensor. Um, I believe we're not going to have to do anything with that as long as we have the the, the solenoid mount from SCE um, to put the factory solenoids back on. And then it pretends like it still has the shock connected to it. All right, let's get this strut out. All right, so I'm starting with getting everything off this, these strut tower bolts, the strut mount bolts, um, this whole plastic wire harness uh, adapter needs to come out. So there's like a little cap here that comes off your trim tool and just kind of pry that thing up. All right, once you get both those little cap, little retainers that hold it onto the stud, um, you can kind of just push this harness back and give you um, access to the three strut mount bolts. And then there's two down here that are holding it to the bot lower control arm. There we go, let's keep going. Get to these 15s. All right, these strut mount bolts are 18s. I'm just gonna use this ratchet wrench. Um, badass wrench uh, that has a flex head. It's a lot easier than trying to get a, a socket on these because they have a stud. They do have resistance all the way out so it's a pain in the ass but I think on one of them you can reach with an extension and a 15 or an 18 from the top so I might try to do that on the back one but we'll see. one there we go okay now I believe these are still 15s on the bottom all right let's get an impact them tension on that. What the heck? Oh, that's probably from the the sway bar actually. So let's see if we can loosen that up a little bit. That's like an 18 as well. So yeah, we're gonna want to loosen this sway bar. Let's hope it gives us a little play. Oh yeah, there is the there is the play that we wanted. Now it does have a stud that was spinning, that's why it took so long to come out, but but look, now we got freedom. Alright, so I ended up having to undo this upper control arm um, ball joint from the knuckle, and that allowed me to come down a lot further in order to drop this below the lower control arm and then sneak it back out. And there's your strut assembly. Let's get this thing on the bench and swap this solenoid over. All right, one thing I always like to do before I get ahead of myself and get this spring off this strut is uh, mark the front. So you know it was sitting here on this side. Take like a paint marker, dot, 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 or a line. I wish my paint marker is old and not dried out. But it should stay. You can see that someone already had the, an alignment line on there. And we kind of just mark everything all the way up so we know right away that, let's see if I can get this, oh, this thing is all dried out. Um, anyways, yeah, you could do tape, we could do Anything that you want to lot, do the front line with a, a whiteout or a crayon or something. Tape could work too, but it may come off. So just always make sure you do that before you pull that spring off because then you, you don't know how it's supposed to be oriented back into the truck, back onto the strut. Because what you'll run into is on a 
without the magnet track or the dampening system, this could be twisted like that, and those top studs are off center. So then you you're not twisting this strut once that spring's compressed. So we're gonna grind a little notch. It looks like in this housing, so we can get that silver retaining clip off of this solenoid. That way, it can pull off the shaft. All right, I'll just improvise, improvise with this little carbine. Let's see. Old Ry Ryobi. Busted out the Ryobi. Let's see if I can get under that thing. Super easy, but get it. We'll get it. There we go. There it is. Boom. All right. Let's pull this thing off. the instructions see where we're at oh yeah so that thing was a freaking booger what I did was to get this off is I had a good hit handle on it with these channel locks and then I had to use a hammer and I had to t tap it a few times to, to pull this thing off and then boop it popped popped right off all right I think that's what we need back to the instructions all right, so you take your SDE mount, um, you line it up, something like that, and then we're gonna wanna get this thing lined up too. Um, you probably really wanna pay attention to these terminals that are in here. Looks like maybe, oh yeah, so it can only go on one way, that's pretty cool. So they're gonna slide that on, and then they get you a, washer and a bolt and boom there you go this is going to mimic the solenoid awesome mount design by uh, SDE um, I'll put a link down in the description so you can jump you right to their website huge shout out to them that's awesome I wouldn't have been able to put these Fox shocks on without these these little mounts for the solenoids now let's get this strut compressor tool set up um, so we can take this GM shock out of the spring and mount and slide our Fox Performance up into this spring and shock strut mount. Let it dry. I just don't want it to go off center. It makes life a lot easier going back in. Port bracket that I was talking about. All right, we got this strut compressor tool lined up somewhat I mean it's <laughs> these things are always sketchy but I like this uh, center bracket I got them as straight as I could uh, let's go for it kind of just alternate until you see some shots 
is pulling on that F1. A little bit harder than that. And once we see it, once you see it off the shock like that. All right, once it's compressed, keep it in a safe direction. Um, let's get the already head. Take that off, put it to the side. Okay, now we should be able to pull this shock assembly out. And voila, there is our shock assembly. Um, this is real nice. What we should do is put this Fox strut right back in. Make sure it's ready. Here is our Fox strut. You can see the difference there. About the same height. This comes with its own new Oh, I might even lift it a little bit. So what we're going to do is slide this back down. And I believe, I don't think it's going to, yeah, that's it. It's just going to sit right on the snap ring. So front, front, like we talked about, slide this thing up in there. And we're going to keep this as our front. So we know, I don't think Fox came with Keep all that on. I think Fox came with any more hardware. Let's see if we can tighten this up without having to hold that one. Looks pretty good. Goes right on. Look at that. That is sweet. All right. Let's get back our 18 back on. Where'd it go? Right here. Or our 19. And decompress this strut. It's not that bad with this tool. Pressure off it. And look at that, dude. We got our. We got our new strut assembly with the shock. Ugh. Yeah, you can see, man, these things are really on there. We may have to get some channel locks loose now, and this one's loose, so that's good. It just got snugged up a little bit. There we go. There is our strut. Let's get it back in the truck. All right, let's get this new strut. Man, these are lighter too. That is sweet. So theoretically, like I said, if we Lined it up right, boom, it would go, it goes right back into where those those top studs are on the on the on the frame. So this is the fun part. What I'm probably gonna do is start these top ones um, and then get this knuckle back on. So let's put these up. That, I'll probably just keep them somewhat this finger tight until the tension. All right, using the little jack stand and get these lower strut bolts lined up. There we go, yeah, they're lined up. Right, Snug them up. Don't know if this was a good idea. Careful that don't slip. Voila. And then we'll have to do that sway bar later once we 
compress this some, maybe on the ground, I'm not sure yet because it, it definitely feels like it's riding a little higher. notice there is another location on these these shocks for um, the snap ring to go that would be about an inch looks like it we're gonna have about an inch lift so that's pretty cool maybe it's like a leveling kit if if not we'll have to take the strut the shock back out of the spring and put it down to the factory height we'll see once we get it down on the ground so now I am going to mount the solenoid. Um, I'm thinking right here on this liner. Uh, the instructions don't have a spot, but I think I saw a picture somewhere of them mounted right there. So that looks like a good spot to me and then I can get this solenoid harness put right back up there and it's not in the way of anything. So we're gonna pull this clip out of the control arm. I think this one. should give us plenty of room to remount this thing right there. So I read the instructions on the shocks. This is a zero inch lift. The middle groove is a one inch lift and the top groove is a two inch lift. So essentially I just gave my dad a, a one inch uh, lift in the front. So. I think that's cool, we'll see. Hopefully that works with the factory level sensors because that's all I'm doing. Um, I didn't plan on changing the ride height so hopefully it doesn't set a code. Um, we'll see, let's put the wheel on and mount this solenoid up and, and see how it's sitting. Okay, these tighten down. Make sure you go around and check all your bolts, everything that you had off, make sure it all is tight. Um, I'm not going to look up torque specs on these. They don't need to be extremely tight or loose. So. Mm. Talk crap about me all you want, but I'm just going to go until they're nice and snug because I remember taking them off. So We did have the knuckle off. Make sure that speed sensor um, and brake pad sensor cables are back up on their little mounts right here. They pulled out when the knuckle came back. Same with this uh, clip that broke. I got one of those little zip tie with the Christmas tree. Just make sure they're all plugged back in. Trying to make this simple as possible. If I have to change it later, I will. So I think that's a good spot. Right there. Oh, shit. So what I'm doing is just doing like pilot holes pilot holes on both of these so they're right where they need to be. Now. All right there. So there are my two pilot holes. Bigger drill bit. Essentially, I should be able to put this on the back side. Okay, got a little Allen. Let's see what size it is. It's a three or nine sixteenths. All right. Both these in there like that. All right. So I'm just going to get this first one lined up. A few. And there we go. Nice. Look at that. And there's another little hole right there. It worked out perfect. I don't know if that's designed that way, but it's 
gonna keep that harness out of the way. It's not hitting anything. Okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's hope I'm doing this right. I feel like I missed a few things, but we're on the right track. Let's keep going, let's put this wheel on. Wheels on, make sure everything's clear of the truck. Um, I tried to line up that sway bar and link. It will, it may get caught on the control arm. So let's just go down as slow as possible here. And then we'll we'll torque the lug nuts too after, after we're done and it's all on the ground. Check that sway bar and link. Oh. See, it was definitely caught. Could have just got my finger messed up there, but I didn't, so. There we go, we're on the ground. First one done. Oh, you can see, it's definitely, it's definitely up an inch on the on the driver's side. Uh, you may, may not be able to detect it on the camera, but there you go, yeah, it's a little bit higher on the driver's side. Awesome, actually, that one inch is gonna be great. I think he's gonna love it. Let's just hope it doesn't mess with the ride height. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing sets any lights. Yeah, I can feel it tilting to the to the that's higher up on the driver's side. That's awesome. Well, I don't see any check engine lights as of yet. I don't know if it will have to see a drive cycle or what, but so far so good. Um, I'm gonna repeat everything that I just did on the driver's side, on the passenger side. Uh, I probably won't film all of it. I might do some time lapse of just knocking it out and then we'll have to head to the back and get those rears uh, removed and replaced. Uh, it's a lot of work. That was just one shock strut, getting the solenoid off the shock and then putting it on the mount, the SDE mount. And so far, so good. Here we go. All right, so the only thing different on the passenger side so far is that top strut, the back bolt for the, or the back nut and stud for the strut on the passenger side is accessible from the top. It's a little hard actually to get it from the wheel well. So I'm gonna use an extension with a 18 millimeter and just use an impact to tighten it down. This is pretty easy. All right, let's go. Done. It's an inch higher in the front. My dad didn't ask for the it, the inch leveling kit, but hey, he got it. I think it looks way cooler. Just sitting a little higher in the front like that so it's not tapered down. Let's go take this thing for a spin. Make sure we got everything bolted up right. All right, we got this on. Let's go drive this. Now, I only did the fronts. I'm tired. I may tackle the rears tomorrow. Um, I got some dinner plans. So let's go drive it and see how well it rides with just the fronts done. Okay, no lights. So, I mean, that's first great sign that we do not have any check engine lights. So let's take this thing for a spin. All right, here we go. It's definitely sitting up. You can feel that just that one inch lift in the front. 
So don't hear any crunching so far backing up and turning, so <laughs> now I probably won't I probably won't feel much, but I do feel it does feel a little softer, like it sways actually just a tiny bit more. It's not as stiff. Wow, that's gonna be so awesome if it's that big of a difference. And I haven't even done the rears yet. No lights. Man, shock delete engineering for the win. We could put these Fox shocks on this Denali. Let's just get it up to speed. This but this road's pretty smooth, so it's not gonna really do it justice, but I definitely feel it. It's a little bit looser and softer up front, sways a little more. Man, I wonder if those magnet track, those like, is the magnet track or the electric damping things were stiffening the shocks up? Who knows? I don't know. My dad didn't like it, but I do notice something. Let's hope he's happy, and we'll drive it again once we get those rear ones on. Don't forget to hit that like button. This was pretty easy, kind of technical. The hardest part is compressing that spring and getting the strut out. But once you're all wrapped up, you can realize it's not that big a deal. This is easily done at home. Check out that Amazon link uh, for that strut compressor. I did do a little research, and it is a good one. So uh, check it out. Do your own research. Make sure you're comfortable using that before you buy it. All right, we got the front shocks replaced, mounted the shock dampening solenoids. Um, let's knock out the rears. It should be a little bit easier. We will take it. There's a bolt at the top of each shock and a bolt at the bottom on the axle. Um, once we get the rear shocks pulled, we'll pull the solenoids and find a spot to mount the solenoids. Like I said, it's a little easier. Here is the driver's side shock uh, mounted to the axle. The bolt for the top is up here mounted against the frame. Um, sometimes it can be a little tricky, but I know they changed it where there's, I don't believe there's a nut on the other side. It's put, the nut is part of the frame. So I should be able to just unbolt that bolt and slide it out. And then this will take a wrench and hold the nut and drive the bolt out. So I was able to get my impact on the upper uh, bolt. I just fished it up through right here on the back side of the axle. Now let's get the lower. All right, here is our Fox Performance Series 2.0 um, replacement. Just gonna pop this thing off. Um, they should just start to, uh, yeah, they'll just come out. It's about the same height. Maybe I'll have to compress it a little bit once it's up in there, but you should be able to fairly easy. Yeah, see, they, it goes in pretty easy. So let's get this thing installed. Um, make sure that you're bolts fit before you get up under the truck but it fits so let's start with the top and then we'll we'll push it into its spot on the bottom okay we're just gonna have to push this up it can be a little difficult sometimes but with the right leverage okay go and then I wait to tighten both of them until you get both of them in and it's sitting in its position so we get it my hose is stuck there we go I'm gonna so we're gonna do the same thing and drill or grind this little tab down. All right, so I'm drilling the edge of this off. Just like 
that. Just enough to get my screwdriver under the lip. Oh, and then you just pry that metal cap off. And then this will slide right off like that. All right, this is a little bit harder to come off. We'll do the same trick as we did on the front. While it is possible to do this on a bench, um, I am going to use my vise because I found that these rears are a lot harder and because they're just a smaller shock. So. Oh gosh, almost. down here. Just like I said, I can't seem to get these ones. There we go. All right. Got it. All right. This happened on one of the other ones. There is some burrs on here and it's not letting it sit smoothly in this uh housing so i'm just gonna yeah, I'm just nice. that's that line out sure. Go through those okay so this thing should just fit nicely now oh yeah there we go much better sits all the way down in i'm gonna go get the other housing and slide this on and bolt it up and then we will mount both of these these solenoids uh, somewhere under the wheel wells or by the axle. All right, we got both of these solenoids on the SDE housing. So let's go underneath the truck and mount them up and then finish up the rear shocks and then give it one more test drive. All right, I ended up just mounting these right here on this bracket that the harness goes to. Um, just using some strong zip ties. And it's not the most secure. It's also on the elements, but I mean, there's not much different from it being on the right in the front on the shock anyways. So uh, I might look into getting some like black L metal uh, bracket or something that I can make and bolt, bolt onto this little bracket here. All right, let's drive this thing. Probably won't feel much difference, but oh yeah, that was cool. It just popped off the curb. Definitely feels more more loose. I love it. I think my dad's gonna love it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, I can't wait to put some miles on these shocks and get his feedback. And I can update in the comments. But so far, so good. I can feel it just driving around the neighborhood and I'm sure the highway will be just the same.